Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Mili and if you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. On this channel, I talk about knitting and crochet. I share my works in progress, my finished objects, my yarn holes, and I also have a few knitting tutorials that I have added and I will continue to add on to those as we go along. On today's video, I have a crochet and knitting to share with you. I have one finished object and I have three works in progress. And I'm going to start with a finished object. So the first thing that I'm going to share with you today is my finished object, which is a crochet blanket, a granny square crochet blanket. And this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but I have used three shades of purple and that's what it looks like. And the border looks like this. Let me hold it together so that you can see clearly. So that's what the border looks like. I've added a bobo stitch on the last row of the border. This blanket is for my grandbaby and she wanted, she wanted lavender, but this year I am doing a lot of starch busting projects. And so I decided to just look in my stash and see what I had. And I showed her this color and she liked it, but I didn't have enough of this to finish a blanket. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought this, um, this shade of purple and this dark one. But I mostly, most of the granny squares are in this color and I've used these ones as accents. And also just to break up the bottom because I thought if I just do it in this color and it's a granny square blanket, it's not gonna be that pretty. So I decided to add these other two shades. And this, this, this color here is, let me see the label. So this is We Love We Love Yarn and it's from hobby.com which is um, based in Denmark. I've shopped there a few times and this is a, just a, a, a regular classic acrylic yarn. So it's 100% acrylic and the ball of this yarn uh, had 191 yards and let me see the recommended if you're going to knit with it you need a, a 5.5 millimeters needle or us 9 and for crochet hook it's also a 5 to 5.5 millimeters and this is a worsted weight yarn uh, this color is color number 34 i believe online it's called wisteria but on the label it just says color number 34 and I've had this in my stash for a while, so I was so happy to be able to use it. And I had five balls of this yarn, and I knew that that wasn't gonna be enough to finish this blanket because even though it's for a kid, I wanted it to be extra large so that she can wrap herself with it and also she can grow with it. So that is this square, and then, um, this light color here okay so these two are hobby lobby i love this yarn and this is the yarn i used up what i had so this is hobby lobby i love this yarn that's what it looks like and it's a four weight and it comes in 355 yards 100 percent acrylic and a crochet hook recommended is 5.5 millimeters or us eight knitting needles if you're going to knit with it so that that's this is the yarn i used but i didn't have um i didn't have i, I because i didn't have uh enough of this color and i don't have i don't know if i have the labels for that oh i have a label one label for the orchid which is this is the orchid the lighter one is called orchid and this one is called grape and so 
that's how I combined them and I am very pleased with the outcome and I have 56 granny squares and I was doing five rounds for each granny square so when it came to joining them it was a little tedious because I had to sit down and sew together 56 granny squares and weaving tails but at least I was only weaving in two tails per square because they are solid so that helped a little bit but I was tired by the end of it because uh, I mean sitting I my me preferred method of joining granny squares is sewing them together with a needle and so first of all I had to lay them flat on the on a flat surface and figure out how I was gonna combine them uh, because I couldn't just sew them at random and I was trying to decide how to do it and I think I finally uh, this I, I only have a few of these and I decided to have to do three of them on each row and so across I have one two three four five six seven eight so it's eight by seven granny squares and so I had to kind of lay it and look at it and decide what looked best and then sew them together and then after that I had to do a border and I just did a simple border so I did two double crochet rows and then I did a half double crochet row and then this border which I did in the grape color it's a single crochet and then I added a bubble stitch just to give it a little bit of some detail and I like the way it turned out it turned out really well and I've already washed it and it's ready to go to the owner and I showed her a picture of it and she says that she likes it so I am happy with it uh, probably next time if I make anything with a solid granny square especially if it's, it's going to be a huge blanket I think I'm going to make a few more rows like maybe eight or nine so that at the end of it I don't have a bunch of granny squares to join together so but I like this project um, I used a 5.5 millimeter hook and this is what I used and that's for the body I used the 5.5 millimeters but for the border I used a six um, six six millimeters uh, crochet hook because I would I wanted these to relax I wanted it to be relaxed on the edges because on a previous blanket I have used the same crochet hook and it didn't work so uh, I, I used five for 5.5 for the squares and 6 millimeters for the border and it turned out okay and I used all the five uh, balls of this yarn but I estimated that for this blanket I used 2250 yards so it took up a lot of yarn but I think it's a good blanket if you're going to use up something that's already in your stash so I think it it makes a good candidate for that so that is my only finished object today and I'm going to show you what I am working on and I have a few I have another uh, crochet project and I have a couple of neat knitting projects so that's what I'm gonna show you next after finishing that granny square blanket I was ready for something easy and so I started this block stitch blanket and I am following a tutorial that I found on Daisy Cottage Designs so you can either follow the YouTube tutorial or you can follow uh, instructions on her blog and she has this she's doing this or she's demonstrating uh, this in four colors and this is what mine looks like so that's the block stitch it's a two row repeat 
um, I've never tried it. This is the first time I'm trying it and I was able to memorize it very quickly. So it's an easy design, but it's also very pretty. Most of the projects that I have seen with this teach are done using multiple colors, but I decided to use, well, I'm using three colors, but I'm not alternating them on each row because after joining 56 granny squares, I was ready for something easy and this is it. And I'm using three colors and this, this first color that I'm using is, uh, it's antique white. And this is Lion Brad Powder of Love, which is, this is the yarn. So Lion Brad Powder of Love. And this is the first time I'm using this yarn. And I love it so much. It's soft, it's squishy, and it works up really, really well. This yarn is a four weight. It's, um, it's a lot of yarn in one ball of yarn so it's a thousand and twenty yards 454 grams or 16 ounces and the needles recommended for knitting are us 8 and the crochet hook is a j or six millimeters and it's a premium acrylic that's what it is i think that is why it is so soft but I kind of like Lion Brad yarns because I'm always, I always find something that is soft and squishy. And this is, this is going to go to my favorite regular yarns to work with. And this is not new, but I've never used it before. This is the first time that I'm using it and I am so happy with it. So definitely a keeper. And it's a hundred percent acrylic. It's 100% premium acrylic. That's why it's so soft. And it's also machine washable and dryable. That's my favorite kind of yarn for regular everyday uh, blankets. And this color is called antique white. So it, it's like a, it's a soft white with a little bit of cream in it, not too much, but it's really such a nice neutral color. So that is, this is going to be my main color. So I'm using a lot of these in this blanket. And so these, I'm going to do 40 rows. These are 40 rows of the antique white. And then this color here is a pink and this is what it is. So this is Yarn B Soft and Sleek and it's another four weight yarn and it comes in 232 yards and it's also added percent low peel acrylic and it recommends six millimeters crochet hook or US eight for the knitting needles. I don't like this one as much as this one. This one is not as soft and I was thinking I might switch, but I've already used it. I've already worked four rows. So if I'm going to switch, this is when I need to switch, but I haven't completely decided because it's not as soft as this. But then again, I'm trying to use up some of the yarn that's in my stash and this is one of them. And I'm hoping, I'm assuming that washing might soften it a little bit, but I think also it's because I'm comparing it to this premium acrylic and this is just a regular acrylic and so it doesn't feel as soft but I don't know I'm going to think about that because if I'm going to switch this is the time to do it before I have done too many rows and so I'm using these three colors and this is a Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. I don't have the label. I don't know where the label is. I've had it in my stash for a long time, but it's called, uh, the name of it is Sea Blue. And that's what it looks like. And this one is soft. It's not, this one is more, it's more comparable to this in softness. 
So maybe if I switch, if I trade this for a pink Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn, then it's going to be more similar, but I don't know. I'm just going to decide. I need to decide actually before um, too many rows in. But I don't know if I mentioned that I found this tutorial on, uh, on Daisy Cottage Designs YouTube, tutor, YouTube channel and uh, blog. And so the, my plan with this blanket is, first of all, I chained 136. And then I'm going to do, these are 40 rows. And I'm going to do 20 rows of this. And then I'm going to do three rows of that. And then I'm going to do 20 rows of this. And then I'm going to do 40 rows of this. For the border, I'm going to use a linen stitch and I'm going to use all these three, uh, the three colors. And I'm going to do the last row in a bobo stitch because that's, that has become my favorite uh, border for blankets. And so I think that is what I'm going to do. But that is as of now, right now, that's what I'm thinking. But that could change when, when, it come, when I get to that part of the blanket. And so that is what I'm working on in terms of crochet. I love how it's turning out. And hopefully, I don't really have a deadline for this. But I'll just take it one day at a time and see if I can finish it quickly. But it's also a very easy stitch and it doesn't take a lot of effort. So maybe it will be one of those that I grab in between uh, something that's a little, bit, a, a little bit more difficult. And I think that is all the information I have on this blanket. And I'll update you once I have made more progress or once I have finished it. So, so far so good. I'm enjoying it and I'm loving the way it's turning out. And next I'm going to show you what else I'm working on. So the next whip that I want to share with you is my grab and go project. And it's a pair of socks. And this is what it looks like so far. I showed, I showed you this when I cast on. And I think the last time I showed you, I was about here, like all the way down here at the, at the toes. But I've been able to go a little bit further. And I have just started my heel increases. So... I'm making slow progress, but I'm not really focusing on this so much. And I am using uh, two Sakura knitting needles, and this is US2. And the, I'm using a 16-inch cord because I found that that's what works best for me. And I like working on my socks this way. I also prefer working on toe-up socks. I think I've only done curve down once when I was learning how to do socks. And I decided that I prefer the toe up because once I'm done with the socks, I am done. Even though when you're doing curve down, I think it's very uh, fascinating and it's very satisfying to do a kitchener stitch here at the bottom. But this is my go-to pattern and this is the sock matation toe up method. And it's actually a sock recipe. So it tells you how to measure your swash and then how, how many to cast on and how many to increase. So he gives you the method. Like, so you can, using this recipe, you can make any size socks. And you can use any yarn as long as you swatch and do your, calcula uh, your calculations to see what your gauge is then you can be able to make any size socks using any yarn. But so far, I've only finished uh, socks using fingering weight. And I think I have another work in progress using decay weight, but I haven't finished that. I'll show you that in the next, uh, next time when I make a little bit of progress. 
and this yarn is another yarn from my stash and this is um, the yarn b authentic hard dyed yarn and i got it a long time ago when it was on sale but this colorway has been discontinued and this the colorway is called techno tribe so you won't be able to find this color unless someone is selling it somewhere online and so far i like the way it's striping up but at one point i was second guessing myself and thinking i should have done the toe in a different color you know like pick one of these colors like maybe the blue and use it for the heels and for the toe and for the calf but it's too late i'm just gonna continue working with this one uh colorway and uh, see how it turns out but i love the way it's looking so far and i'm hoping to finish this probably in august if all goes well so that i can have something to wear these are mine i'm making these for myself because the last two pairs pairs of socks have been gifts but i want to keep these for myself and so far that's what I have and I love it and I'm enjoying the process and socks have become my grab and go project. So I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I have socks on my needles every time so that I can have a quick project to grab and go because they are, it's a small project. It doesn't take much time. And I also think that um, knitting socks is very interesting because you use different uh, techniques as soon as you're about to get bored then you have to start on a new technique for your socks hopefully the next time I show you these socks it will be a finished object the last project that I want to share with you today is my summer shirt which I'm so excited about and this is what I am working on and I'm almost finished. So it's a pattern by Petit Knit and this is the first time that I'm working on a pattern designed by Petit Knit. And um, I love it, it's easy to follow. It has great reviews and her patterns have great reviews on Ravelry. And so this uh, summer I decided to try a t-shirt, one, one t-shirt and this is what I decided to make and it's mostly because it's knitted in DK weight and I didn't want to make a project that was going to take the whole summer. There is a fingering version of this. I think it's called the summer tea. But I didn't want to do that because it's going to take a long time to work on a fingering weight garment. And so I decided to do the DK weight and it has knitted up really, really fast. And this is what it looks like. So as you can see, I'm almost finished. I actually have about uh, maybe another 10 rows and I am ready to bind off. So it, it knits up really, really fast. Uh, so it's knitted on DK weight yarn using six, US 6 uh, knitting needles. And so that's a very, very quick knit. And the yoke, it has a circular yoke and it's knitted in the round. So you cast on at the neck and then you knit one by one ribbing and then there are strategic increases throughout the yoke and it comes out in this layers it looks really really nice and i have tried it and it fits me but it's slightly larger than i would like but i think i'll still wear it but i was testing this yarn and this pattern in terms of i wanted to see how it would fit and this is the first time i'm knitting a garment using this yarn and I wasn't sure if it was gonna be too large, but there are no measurements that actually just fit me exactly. And so I, I decided to, be, to do the larger size other than to go down a size because I would rather have 
a larger garment than a smaller one. So um, the, the size that I'm making is extra large. And I think it has a little bit of positive ease. I should have thought about that and maybe just gone and made the large. But so far, so good. I tried it on and it fits me, but it's a, just slightly larger than I would like. So my goal is to go back and make another one. And now I'll go, I'll make a large size. I am almost done and I just have like how many rows? Maybe 15 rows and I'll be ready to bind off. And it's, it's made in one piece from top, uh, top to bottom. And so you cast on here at the neck and then you join to knit in the round and the yoke is done using one by one rib and then there are increases throughout but it's so easy to follow and it knits up really really fast and i think when i checked on ravelry there were over 8000 projects on this specific garment so this designer has very good reviews on almost all her her designs and that is why I decided to give it a try. So the yarn that I'm using is a yarn that has been discontinued. So you're not going to find it in store. And I'll be doing a lot of that because I'm using yarn that's already in my stash. Uh, but this is Hobby Lobby. Uh, it's called Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids. But the reason I picked this yarn is because it's a hundred percent cotton and it's a DK weight, and it was already in my stash. And this color is called Inkjet. So that's the yarn. And the cake, this is my third cake. So I've already used up two cakes, and I, on the two cakes, I had a little bit left. So this is left from the two cakes, but I didn't want to have to join too many joints at the, at the sleeve. So I decided to break out the new cake because I didn't want to go halfway and then had to add another, uh, I had to, to join another new yarn. So I decided to just join here and be done with it. But I think this would have, uh, gone a little bit further, but that's okay. So this is the third cake that I'm working with, but I'll still have plenty left because I'm almost done. Like I said, I only have like 10 more, 10, I think 15 more rows and I'll be done with it. So this yarn is, it's a DK weight and it comes in 335 yards, but, um, and the recommended needle size is a US 6. So I was able to get gauge to match the pattern with this yarn exactly. So that made it easy for me. So I didn't have to switch or change anything. And uh, the yarn that the sample is knitted on is, uh, let me see. It's a yarn that I want to tr I want to try, and I think it. I found it in my local yarn store, but uh, I haven't bought the yarn. But I'll go and buy some. Uh, let me see if it says. I'll leave. I'll leave a link. I don't see it on the pattern, but I'll leave a link uh, to this pattern if you're interested. And you can go check it out on Ravelry. It's for it's it's going for I think it was six dollars and fifty cents. But I'll leave all the information down below if you're interested. But it's very uh, beginner friendly, I believe. It's not that hard because there are not so many techniques that you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to knit in the round, you need to be able to do uh, increases and then to be able to do one by one ribbing. And I think that's a very beginner type of skill for any knitter. So, and the other thing with this uh, pattern, it's, it knits up really fast, especially if you use the DK weight because uh, it's not, it's a very small, it's just a t-shirt. So there is not much you're doing with it and the sleeves are short so 
once you pick up the sleeves, you're only knitting about this much. It's about two inches and three quarters before you do the ribbing. And so there's, there's not much to knit. And so if you're looking for a quick project, I think this one would fit the bill. So, so far, um, I think after this one, I'm going to knit another one using this yarn. This is the same yarn, and I got this on clearance from Hobby Lobby, so I have a bunch of different colorways, but I want to try it in this pink color. Because this one will also work with my wardrobe, and the reason I picked a black for the summer is because I know that I'll wear this. And I had this color option as well, but I'm more likely to wear this than this. This would be like something I wear not as much as this because black goes with most of my wardrobe. And so that is why I decided even though it's a summer shirt, I'm going to knit it in black because I don't want to knit something that I won't wear. And, and anyway, I'm going to be wearing it inside, so it doesn't really matter. Plus, it's cotton, so it's very breathable. And this fabric, uh, it's, it's very breathable, so it's, it's not going to be... It's, it's a good... I think it's a good choice, especially because it's 100% cotton. So, these... I'm going to finish this uh, today in the next, once I'm done here, I'm going to go sit down and finish this so that I can uh, decide if I'm going to cast on right away or if I'm going to go and work on some of the other projects that are already on my needles. So that is what I have so far. So pleased with it, so happy with it and um, once I finish, I'll take some pictures and I'll probably show it to you next time as a finished object and I'll show you how it looks. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you're working on. Are you working on summer garments or are you just working on what you would normally work on? I am typically not a seasonal knitter, and by that I mean I don't knit summer garments during the summer or winter garments during the, the winter. I just knit what I feel inspired to knit, and I crochet or knit depending on what I'm feeling inspired to do. But I felt inspired to make a t-shirt, and that is why I grabbed this one and worked on it. So let me know what you're working on and how it's working out for you. And whatever you're working on, I hope you're enjoying the process and you're having a good time. So until next time, happy knitting. <music>